Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. We're here at the 2011 Perm Spiel, hosted by NEFCA. NEFCA helps Jewish organizations bring their events to the forefront using the arts. NEFCA is a leader in helping Jewish organizations bring their mission to the forefront through the arts. Tell us how you got started and a little bit about this production. Hmm. How'd I get started? Luck, really? Uh... I came up with this idea, a Broadway producer wanted to do it on Broadway, which I didn't want to do, but then I said, hmm, maybe a little charity work, a little one-night style, and, and uh, we brought Nefka to fruition, and I don't know, it's been seven years, I can't believe it. I thought it had three years max in it. And you've been in the arts for a number of years, sure. and you know, developing your own organization is sometimes difficult, uh, but you've, you know, you, you've done so much in really inspiring you know, the, the Jewish community, especially you know, looking around tonight and seeing how people came out uh, you know, to hear the story program through a different, different lens, as you can say. Um, how do you put it all together? Well, three weeks of not sleeping, really. Um, it's very difficult because we need just the greatest town in the world where it doesn't work. But I've just lucked out year after year getting stars from all the Broadway shows and TV and comedy. Um, and it's just a matter of 300 no's to every yes. A lot of scheduling conflicts, a lot of people when they're off shows doing movies. So just uh, being tenacious. But, but also I think everyone's proud to be a part of this night because of Birthright. And everyone knows what a meaningful organization it is. So. You know, in seeing the impact of Birthright, it, it, it's you know you can see in this room a lot of alumni here looking to reconnect, and yeah. everyone connects differently. We heard from people the arts and culture, something that helps create that connection. What do you think about that? I mean, I, I started my organization based on that. I think there's there's such a beautiful way to connect meaningful paths with the arts. I think all over the world, I think cultures bond through the arts. You know, sometimes cultures who don't get along, the arts bring them together, whether it's music or film um, or any kind of art. So I think it's, art's powerful. And that's you know, evident here and why we've done seven of these straight in a row. And we're, we're just real real happy the way it's worked out. And you have so many different types of acts. You know, you have you know, Gilbert Goffrey was tonight, right. and you had the you know, amazing Broadway stars. How do, you, how do you explain to people who necessarily don't know about Judaism, what is Purim? I tell them it's uh, St. Patrick's Day meets Halloween. You dress up like Halloween and you drink like it's St. Patrick's Day and, and uh, you just party it up. Like if you're in Israel, you, uh, you don't have to explain it because your bus driver's drunk and your waitress is drunk and everyone's drinking there. So it's a blast. Great. And where can people learn more about your organization? Uh, www.nefka.org. And uh, all the information's there and highlights and pictures and all stuff. And, uh, yeah, we want to do more to foster the community. So thank you. All right. Good luck. Thanks, Aaron. What is the story of Purim? The story of Purim is when hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young Jewish people get together and they're mostly single and they're aching to find their bishert. And they come to a place like this and they look around and they look around and they look around. And they look around. <laughs> And, and it is necessary for the God on high that you believe in to sprinkle some fairy dust way from up there because otherwise they are absolutely impossible to mate. And, and it's that's like right. mating a horse with an elephant to get them really to do it. And, and that's what Purim and is And this about. is that's true. And this is the seventh year that this show went on. Tell us a little bit about you know why you do this. Because it's Purim, and it's a wonderful Jewish holiday celebrating a Jewish victory, and uh, it's a nice thing to do. And it's even would even be nicer if we had in New York a big dress up Purim parade as they do in Israel as a further celebration. Is that your next venture? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? That's true. Who knows? And this is supporting the Birthright Israel Foundation. You know, you're the you know the inspiration, the co-founder to make this uh, you know this a reality, to give the opportunity for young Jewish adults to experience Israel. Tell us a little bit about you know how that how it's changing the Jewish world. Well, I think it is changing the Jewish world. I'm never 100% sure, because you only know, perhaps in retrospect, but 
the sense I get is that all sorts of people have developed a newfound love for their Jewishness, for Israel, and maybe, just maybe, it will create a new vigor, a new excitement, and a more enthusiastic Jewish world. And it, when, when you go on these trips and you see these people who have limited or no background experiencing Israel for the first time, it's amazing it, it, the, the impact. You can see it from literally from day one to day ten that it's influencing our Jewish community. I think it does. I think it does. I, I, I tend to want to mitigate enthusiasm because it's a long life. And I really want, over the long haul, for it to work. I want people in this room to begin to live a Jewish life, for whatever that means. And that remains to be seen. And also Next, you've been you know, a proponent of Next. Next Shabbat um, yes. is something that has been hugely successful. Next Shabbat, I think, has been hugely successful. And to create Shabbat as a new Jewish, non-Orthodox Jewish ritual would be a wonderful thing. And I think the birthright Next Shabbat is moving us in that direction. We actually um, saw Next Shabbat. We, we hosted uh, a number of them recently, uh, just got back from a trip, and people are eager to reconnect and experience that, you know, that Shabbat in Jerusalem and bring that, that, that excitement back. Now, yes. wh where do you see Next going in the next, the next year, two years? It's unclear. It's unclear because we've done some things very well and some things less than well, and we have to figure out how to best use our resources to achieve the most we can. And we're rethinking a lot of things, but it's been a great effort, and hopefully it will be better and better as time goes on. Again, it's been a relatively new thing. So, I mean, when it first started, people were like, oh, people will get back and the Jewish community will welcome everyone in. And that didn't happen. Well, the Jewish community in America is, in my view, not the greatest uh, welcomer and not the greatest community in the history of the Jewish world. So we got a long way to go in that respect. And what do you say to people that say, you know, how, how do we know that birthrights making a difference? How do we know? Well, we don't. I mean, we know, you know, because you're part of it and you see it, and you see the changes from before and after. But it'll take time till these kids are in their 40s and their 50s, and you see the impact on their Jewish contributions, and their Jewish marriages, and their love of Israel, and that is a ways off. You know, and the Israeli government, you know, came forward and saying that they, they want to increase, you know, funding for the program. Right. That's it. That's something, you know, you can see the, the, the impact it has on the Israeli society as a whole, from the bus drivers, the hotels. You know, you walk around Ben Yehudi, so you, you know, welcome Birthright Israel. Right. Right. Well, because Birthright's there in good times and bad, and the kids who are on Birthright develop a remarkable attachment to Israel and Israelis, and you can't duplicate that elsewhere. And in that respect, it's wonderful. And even those 10 little days are precious. Because again, if I ask you, think about a random 10 days in your life. How many do you even remember? But these 10 days, those kids will remember forever. Okay. Thank you much for your time. My pleasure. Birthright Israel alumni community is helping thousands of New Yorkers reconnect to the Jewish roots. Tell us what you're doing and, and how you do it. Uh, well, we've been doing this for about eight years in the city of New York, and uh, really we're there to provide that gap between the Birthright Israel experience, which really excites people, um, and their Jewish community here at home, and, and sort of 
uh, filling that void for most people who really get excited about Jewish life but don't really know what to do with that excitement. So we have educational programs and Friday night dinners and Hebrew classes and meetings with IDF soldiers and a Zionism campaign and a, a Holocaust studies program, really all kinds of things for all kinds of people uh, to help them to network with each other and really ultimately to learn more. And you have like Shabbat programs, you've got bar and bat mitzvah things. There's so much that you do. Like, how do you do it? Right. Well, uh, not by myself. We have a team of uh, 10 people uh, working with us, and we have a center on 13th Street. Um, and really, there have to be that many different kinds of programs because there are that many different kinds of alumni of Birthright, all kinds of people, some with no background at all, some with lots of background. Everybody's looking for something else, and it's our job to really provide whatever they need. And when they get back, they have like this, like, they have this, I call it the fire. And they're just like, what do I do? Where do I go? Right. And it, it, there is, there's, everyone has their own interests and, and doing things. And, you know, seeing the, the different events that you had, you recently had the Take Back Zionist event, right. and seeing literally there's like over a thousand people there, just right. like really harnessing that energy. Right. Well, that's what's exciting, I think, about Jewish life and about Israel in general, is that there's something to get excited about for everybody. It's so deep. It's so rich. It's so full of opportunities. Opportunity. And really, whether you're interested in tech study, or if you're interested in learning Hebrew or just hanging out with other Jews, it's exciting. So, you know, all the things that we do have that energy in it. And the birthright trip itself, obviously, is the pinnacle of the energy. But we can't, you know, bring you Tel Aviv here in New York. Uh, if you want that, we'll help you get back to Israel. That's one of the things that we do. Um, but, you know, the excitement that everybody feels when they're in Israel is translatable here, you know, to some other format. And we think that that Jewish education, we think that knowledge, we think that Jewish events, we think that Jewish people are exciting. And so our events are just as exciting as the people who participate in them. Yeah. And where can people learn more about getting involved in programs? You can go to nymetro.birthrightisrael.com for a calendar of all of our events, and you can definitely go to takebackzionism.org and help us to get the word out that Zionism, uh, which is really effectively your experience in Israel, is a positive, powerful, inspirational word, and we are planning to take that word back and return it to its rightful owners, the Jews. Take it back. Take back Zionism. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. As you can see, it was a fantastic show. This is Aaron Herman. And thank you for watching.